Since November, protesters nationwide have been taking to the streets, insisting the Mormon church cross the line between church and state by being a strong financial influence in California's fight over ballot proposition number eight, banning gay marriage. When Prop 8 won by a razor-thin margin, protesters saw Mormon donations as the deciding factor. And now, two contradictory stories have emerged. The Mormon Church reported that they only contributed just over $2,000 to the Yes on 8 campaign. But beyond that amount, Mormon leaders clearly stated that they did not contribute money. But others claim that the church lied about its financial contributions, accusing them of bankrolling upwards of 70%, or $30 million of the Prop 8 funds. They cite an aggressive door-to-door -door campaign, print and television ads, websites and internet videos as evidence of massive spending. Because of this, the California Fair Political Practices Commission has jumped into the fray. It is investigating whether the Mormons vastly underreported their financial contributions. Within days of launching the investigation, the church submitted an amended financial accounting to include $20,000 in legal services donated to the Yes on 8 campaign. But ANP has acquired something the California Commission has not yet seen or heard, a piece of evidence that may expose a gaping hole in the Mormons' financial accounting. Many of you will text message, blog, Make phone calls, walk your This training video was broadcast via satellite to hundreds of Mormon churches in five states in the weeks leading up to the election. Only four minutes of the hour-long broadcast were released publicly. But ANP has obtained the audio and text of the full broadcast. It features Mormon leaders outlining a war plan for assuring the passage of Proposition 8. I'd like to focus on the campaign to pass Proposition 8 after much preparation and groundwork, now is the time for us to shine in this magnificent cause. The power of the Spirit will be there to help us in our work in defending the kingdom of God and strengthening the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church elders go on to promise specific and costly contributions to the campaign. The church has prepared several multimedia pieces, print, radio, television, internet, and other new media, we have established a website with videos, podcasts, messages, links, and materials. The website, preservingmarriage.org, carries the Mormon Church's logo and copyright and is full of expensive-looking campaign videos. Join us. Join us. Join all of us. Be wise. Be informed. Vote yes on Proposition 8. The satellite broadcast goes on to announce the production of other potentially costly items, yard signs. And yard signs will be blossoming. That means they'll be put up in your neighborhoods and around your homes. And the establishing of call centers. On November 3, we'll have all-day calling centers. In the four-minute excerpt posted publicly, the Mormon leaders attempt to frame their involvement with Proposition 8 as a moral issue rather than political. Whatever their motivation, the church has not reported expenditures for any of the items announced in this video, including the cost of the satellite broadcast itself. If the Fair Political Practices Commission finds that the Mormon church has indeed underreported their contributions, they could be charged up to $5,000 per violation, and larger fines could be levied by a California civil court. But protesters are attempting to take the fight to a federal level, demanding that the Internal Revenue Service strip the Mormon Church of its tax-exempt status. Church. Tax is church. Tax is church. But did the church's involvement in California violate IRS code? The IRS strictly forbids tax-exempt religious organizations from participating in any political campaign or endorsing political candidates. IRS code also forbids religions from engaging in a, quote, substantial amount of political lobbying. But how does the IRS define substantial? Yeah, I honestly don't know. We would surely like the IRS to tell us. Liz Town is a director at the Alliance for Justice and has studied conflicts between the IRS and religious organizations. The problem is the IRS has never defined what the difference is between substantial and insubstantial so we don't really know if they have exceeded their lobbying limit or not. But even if the IRS were to define what constituted a substantial amount, 
church critics would still have a difficult time proving the Mormons in violation. Churches, unlike other nonprofit groups, do not have to open their financial books to anyone. The difficulty of making that case is the fact that there is no public disclosure for the Mormon Church on what they did this year. Churches do not have to disclose much of anything to the public. You can't find out how much they spent on anything or how much they even took in. Barry Lynn is the executive director of Americans United for Separation of Church and State. The state shouldn't be making theological decisions and the church should not be unduly emphasized, unduly regulated by government. But I do think it's absolutely fair to require that they disclose with some real clarity how much they spend and on what they spend it. An investigation by the IRS would be the only way to discover if the Mormons substantially and illegally contributed to helping pass Proposition 8. But for now, the full amount of the church's influence remains unknown. I don't know what the real amount is. Is it a million, 10 million? Someone even said 50 million. I'd sure like to know because I think it would be helpful in understanding the dynamics of the next campaign. It would be ideal from a practitioner perspective if this were the case that actually forced the IRS to tell us the difference between substantial and insubstantial amount of lobbying. We've got to know the bottom line. Who gave the money? For what purpose? How was it spent? It's only fair. It's only reasonable. Churches do not, in my judgment, have any special right to act in the dark.